Hello everyone, welcome back to the Pro MMA Betting Podcast. So we're going to talk about UFC Singapore today. As I alluded to on last week's podcast, I'm not in love with this card from a, a fan perspective or a betting perspective. Um, in both aspects, I view it as one of the worst cards of the year. So it's probably going to be quite a quick podcast this week. Um, I think it's really jumping out at me. Line-wise, although I've not looked at the go go the distance and inside the distance line, so we'll do that as we as we work through the cards. And maybe there will be something that pops out. That's happened the last couple of weeks actually, um, when I've broke down the cards and can't remember exactly the plays that I highlighted, but um, I think two weeks running there, two of the preferred ones have have come in. So so yeah, maybe we'll find something there. But in terms of straight picks and so forth, not not an event I'm really looking forward to betting wise. Um, we will have live betting for it though um, and normally these cards that are kind of early morning early afternoon UK time they seem to throw up really good live bet. I remember the last card we had I think it was the China card where Zhang fought Andraj in the main event it was really really good for live betting um, the books weren't familiar with a lot of the fighters the traits and tendencies they clearly weren't aware of and it gave us some really really solid live betting lines uh, but as always, we'll recap on how we how we done at the weekend. So um, really good weekend. We had a sweep on the UFC. We was on Dominic Reyes, a uh, cash easy for us, and we also had him in a parlay with Molly McCann. Didn't tip Molly to members at minus five hundred, minus six hundred. If anyone's wondering, we got in nice and early when she was. Well, I personally got in early when she was around minus two hundred, minus two fifty. I think I tipped her to members when she was about minus 300. Bit of a dicey round one, but she took over thereafter. Um, and yeah, we managed to cash comfortably on both the UFC bets. Um, I also had a bet on combat. I didn't tip it to members because I bet it at minus 220. And, and by the time I'd bet it, it had spiked up to minus 280. And I wasn't confident enough to tip it at that price. And I, I try not to tip straight plays above you know minus 250 is kind of the maximum really um you start getting away from having value in mma there's so much that can happen it's such an unpredictable sport Um, and live betting was really good for us as well we won four units across live betting over the weekend we only placed three live bets on the ufc card but they all came in and then we had the boxing card on saturday night really good domestic show here in the uk we managed to take a a units profit on that so we took four units on live betting plus the four free units from the pre-bet so seven unit weekend for members guys the package is really really cheap 12 months it's 150 pounds for live betting only if you want live betting and pre-betting it's 195 pounds for 12 months members that bet 100 pounds per unit are 11,300 pounds in profit in 2019 it's a great return on your investment if your unit size is 20 30 pounds or or anything more you're going to make back your investment guys really really quickly it's not going to take you long at all to make back that 150 pounds or the 195 pounds and it's for 12 months all our bets are third party tracked guys I say it every week we track every bet there's a direct link to all three trackers below this video you can also view them via the website ProMMABetting.com direct links on there as well we don't paper trade either like a lot of these tipsters, touts, whatever you want to call them out there we put a bet slip along with the stake on our Twitter page I like to prove to you that I am risking not just tipping and letting you guys take all the risk. Prime example, the Dominic Reyes fight, I tipped um, three units, we're in total three units on Dominic Reyes and I posted the slip for that £3,000 bet with a basically a £2,000 return. I bet whatever I tip and if anyone ever wants to test me on that then just ask me for the slip and I will post it. But most of them get posted anyway on Twitter. There is no one more transparent than us. I dare you to find someone more transparent. And no one is ever going to call us out either for lack of transparency or trying to skew our results, skew our figures. If we lose, we lose. It's going to happen. It's betting. I treat this as an investment though, guys. This, I mean, it is betting. Don't get me wrong. There is risk. But 
I do not treat this like a, a gambling kind of profession where you know we we're playing red or black you know a lot of research goes into this we bet very carefully as I said many times on here I'm not one of these guys that's going to be telling you to risk 30 40 units per event it's absolute nonsense two bad events you've wiped out most of your bankroll and I'd like to see these guys that are recommending you risk 30 40 units per per event I'd like to see their bet slips how much are they actually risking are they actually risking any money it's just absolute madness we never go above 10 units uh, we rarely even touch 10 units I mean the weekend just gone we risked um, three units on our pre bets if you guys lose I lose too and it it's hurts me a lot to lose I did not like losing uh, you know I put a lot of effort into this stay up every weekend to provide the live betting service so there's a lot of time and investment that goes in it from our end so and yeah I just like to show that I'm um, that we're betting exactly what we're tipping to our members we're fully transparent no one is more transparent out there there's a lot of vultures out there in this um, type of sector unfortunately gives a lot of us a bad name but all I can do is just be as as transparent as I can be and I think my prices are extremely competitive for the kind of return you're going to get um, if you can utilize the pre betting and the live betting and you're watching all these UFC events and you're not maybe not making much money guys jump on board like I said it's hundred and fifty pounds for the year for live betting hundred and ninety five for pre betting and live betting combined it's bargain prices I've notified of a competitor before who charges two hundred pound a month just for live betting it's criminal guys just come over to me we're going to look after you you're going to make money with us everything is documented like I said we've got I think seven UFC shows left to finish off the year I originally targeted a um, £20,000 profit for a £100 per unit members it was a little bit ambitious um, we're not going to hit that now it's not going to happen but we're at 11300 so I still don't see why we can't get to the kind of 13 14000 pound mark profit which you know you, your unit size is a hundred pounds your initial investment is you know what I've said it is 150 or 195 you know, you're making massive massive profit still guys it's a great return on your investment here in the UK I'm not going to make that return on money anywhere the bank interest rates are poultry here this is what has changed my life and you can make a second income with it it's it's very easy to make a second income with this it is MMA it's unpredictable we can't win every week though guys just take that on board if you're buying in for the year, you're buying in for 12 months. You're buying in for 40 plus MMA shows. You're buying in for probably 20 odd boxing shows. You're buying in for a handful of Bellator shows that we're going to bet and other smaller events. It's a long process. We can't win every week. No one can win every week. You've got to take the losses with the wins. Just know that we will come out on top over the course of a year and profit. You're going to get your rough patches. You're going to get your good patches. You've just got to take it all on board, accept it, prepare yourself for it happening because we can't win every week. So a lot of people who look into investing in sports betting expect results week in week out it can't happen guys it's impossible especially in MMA where it's so unpredictable all we can do is find value on the lines bet that value and we will win money over the long course but you've got to treat it as an investment it's a 12 month investment when you're buying in for the year with me treat it as such don't kind of start moaning and whinging if you have a losing week it's going to happen we will win long term though that is the key so just keep that on board that website isn't updated in terms of the pricing packages that I'm offering at the moment. So you can pay via PayPal info at ProMMABetting.com for the designated amounts. 150 for live bets only, 195 pre bet and live betting. DM me if you want me to send you that in writing with the email address or drop us an email at the aforementioned email address and we can confirm details there we'll get the link out to you for discord so you can join the private chat we offer the live betting via text and via audio service as well this weekend coming we've got UFC Singapore which is going to kick off live betting will start from 11 a.m. UK time Saturday morning probably going to run through to around 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon UK time. There's a boxing show a couple of hours after. 
big show in London. It's the Josh Taylor Regis Progress fight. Massive fight in boxing. Can't wait for it. One of the one of my most look forward to fights of the year. You've also got Derek Chisora on the undercard. There's a couple of other good fights on the undercard, so we'll be live betting for that. Might be some pre betting for that as well. I'm just finalising what I'm gonna do with regards to that card. But there's yeah, there's two events on Saturday basically for pre bets and for live betting. There is a boxing event Friday night in Italy, but I don't think it's being shown here in the UK, so I don't think there's going to be any live betting for it. So there's just going to be the two events this weekend. Um, there is Bellator happening as well Saturday night, actually. I've not decided... Well, there's two Bellators. There's one Friday night, one Saturday night. I think... I'm not sure if I have live betting for the Friday night one, but the Saturday night one, there will be live betting. I haven't decided if I'm going to start for it or not yet. Um, I mean, looking at the main card, it, you've got Ed Roof and Phil Davis seem to have squash matches. Might just get up for the the main event, the Rory McDonald, um, the Lima fight. So, so I'm undecided. So there's definitely two events though that's going to be live betting, potentially free. So guys, you could you could make your money back on your initial investment at the weekend. I can't guarantee it. Obviously, we could have a losing weekend. You never know. But just know, long term, we do win. Anyway, that's enough about the service. Let's go and break down this card from uh, bottom to top. As I said, guys, this is going to be quick because I'm not in love with this card from a, a betting angle. The, I don't like the lines. I don't like the matches. It's it's not a good card for betting, in my opinion. There might be others out there that think it's a great card for betting, but for me personally, no. First fight in the heavyweight division... Regular listeners will know I don't like betting low level heavyweight fights and we've got three on this card. So uh I did do tape on I mean I pretty much done tape on all the fights. I didn't go in depth on a lot of them because I was just like, no, it's not gonna be a bet for me. Um but I was trying to find a bet for this card, so I did look at, at most of the fights. Um so Pazoa, I mean there's very little tape on him. We've we were pretty much going off his UFC debut. We took on Cyril Gain, who's also on this card. Um, it doesn't look physically in great shape. He was he was kind of just winging bombs against Cyril. Um, yeah, I mean it's is what it is. Low level heavyweight. Um, he's taking on Jeff Hughes. Coming off that no contest with Todd Duffy, where let's be honest, Todd Duffy just quit in that fight. Realised he wasn't going to get Jeff Hughes out there early. He was tired took the easy way out as soon as he um as soon as he could so I think Jeff Hughes would have would have won that fight I mean he's he's pretty tough Jeff Hughes um he's been stopped once in the fifth round against Dan Spawn he's got a good he's got a good um engine for a heavyweight um made his debut against Maurice Green uh, he was I mean he beat him in LFA over five rounds uh, a lot of clinch fighting in the LFA fight a lot of time spent against the fence but against Maurice Green I mean it was very close but he just didn't do enough. Um, he got rocked in that fight as well. He got rocked by Duffy. I mean, he is hittable. I mean, look, you've got a favour. You've got a favour him here. But I mean, I just don't have a full read on Pizzoli. I mean, he he doesn't look great. Don't get me wrong. And he's he's probably going to lose this fight and be cut from the UFC. But just low level heavyweights. Jeff Hughes has been hurt in both UFC fights. Have seen him. Well, I haven't seen the fight, but he did get knocked out by Dan Spawn a few years back. But he does seem tough and gritty, but I just can't get behind a, a minus 200, and he's up at minus 235 now. That's, uh, that's a pass for me. Let's have a look at inside the distance. The fight doesn't go to a decision, minus 155. I mean, I've got to say, Pessoa... <laughs> His grand game is a concern because literally as soon as that fight hit the mat, he got subbed like instantly. Um, Jeff Hughes isn't really a finisher though. At the same time, for a heavyweight, you know, he's he's kind of going the distance a lot. He's not a huge puncher. I just think it's a complete pass for me on that one. Um, I'll, I'll pick Jeff Hughes to win, but as a better, no, I'm not getting behind. I'm not getting behind that price on the money line and I don't really like the goes the distance doesn't go the distance line let's move on to the next fight we've got Loma Luka Bonmi taking on Alexandra Albu 
I didn't the, redo Tape on Albu here. I've got a, a vague memory of her. I know she's not very good, but she's pretty physical. But I, I, I watched Loma's last fight. Um, she is an atom weight. She's moving up to 115 here, so she's going to be at a big physical disadvantage. Skill-wise, I wasn't blown away, to be fair. She's pretty kick-heavy. She was having a lot of kicks caught. Yeah, I just didn't really see what I was hoping to see. I, a few people had kind of tipped me off uh, regarding her before I did the tape, so I was quite excited to tape her because, I, you know, I'd love to fight Albu here, but I just wasn't feeling it. Um, she's gone to the favourite now as well. I think when I was looking at tape, she was plus 120, but I wasn't... Uh, you know, this is low-level women's MMA as well, as, as well as low-level men's heavyweight fights. I don't like low-level women's MMA, unless I can see there's a big skill disparity. And here, I just really don't know what's going to happen. Loma's going to be outside. She's going to be out physical. Yeah, she's the more skilled uh, fighter on the feet, but, you know, the power doesn't seem to be there. As I said, very kick-heavy. Didn't seem to really have much in terms of hands. And the girl she fought in her last fight was... She wasn't mugging her off. It was a, a you know, fairly competitive fight. Um, fight goes to decision, minus 265. I mean, probably hits, but that's a pass for me, guys. You can already hear my um, lack of motivation for this card, I think. Um, in terms of a winner, I'm not even making a prediction on that. I, I didn't go back and look at Albu. I've only watched one of Loma's last fight. I just saw enough to know that it wasn't going to be a bet for me. Um, next, another low-level men's heavyweight fight. We've got Sergei Pavlovich taking on Maurice Green. I tried to do tape on this one, guys. I went back and started looking at Pavlovich, but because some guys that I chat to were uh, pretty confident on him, some have got a lot of money on him, but I just didn't like what I saw volume-wise from him. Um, I thought he was pretty low volume. I went back and watched a fight from uh, a few years ago. Let me just bring him up. I'll tell you what fight I watched. I watched his fight with... I think it was the Alexei Kudin fight. So we're going back for like three years, but it was just very low volume. Um, his UFC run, it's hard really to get a read on him. He got taken out by Overeem in round one, and then the, uh, the gun fight only lasted you know, a minute of round one. <laughs> just, I just worry about his volume. Um, Maurice Green, he got that win over Jeff Hughes. Uh, very close fight, we've already mentioned it. Then he came back, he beat Junior Albini, but I mean, Albini's just he's not good. Um, and the same with Gome, who Pavlovich beat, just not good. It's just a hard one for me. I mean, what I did notice with Maurice Green, he's, I remember physically he looked in way better condition from the huge to the Albini fight. So he might be taking this a lot more serious now. Um, he's very tall, he's like 6'7". He's got big reach, 82 inches. Pavlovich's reach is sitting at... Oh God, Pavlovich is 84 inches. He's actually got a reach advantage. But yeah, it's just a... I, look, I can't get behind... Pavlovich at minus 230 it's a, it's a pass for me and Maurice Green I'm just not overly keen on playing him as a even you know he's a plus 200 dog here but it, you know on paper Pavlovich should win this fight but I, I really don't know guys it's it's a low level heavyweight fight for me I don't like Pavlovich's volume it was enough to turn me off really going deep into this fight because I don't like betting low level heavyweights as it is throwing a low level heavyweight who's sitting at minus 230 I just don't know I can't even make a prediction on this I'm sorry that this is the second fight already that I'm not predicting but as a better I need to be smart I don't like risking you know I, I bet a lot of money my unit sizes are a a uh, thousand pounds per unit I do not like risking four figures on fights where I don't have a strong read especially when it's a low level heavyweight fight it's always been a a rule of mine I'm not going to break it I've made a lot of money betting on MMA other people can do as they wish but you know this is a I earn more money from this than I do from my job so I'm not going to change anything for anyone people are going to make cash using my style but for me, that's it's just another pass fight. Next, best fight of the undercard. We've got Enrico Barzola taking on Movsar Evloev. 
Look, I'm firmly on the Evloev train. I bet him in his UFC debut. I've done a lot of tape on him for that particular fight. Relentless kind of wrestling, grinding style. Stand up a work in progress, but he's not a, he's not completely clueless on the feet. But really, really good cardio. I've seen him go five rounds in the in the mountains in Russia. Uh, with, without ever slowing down, so yeah, he's he's a he's a he's a tough out for a, for a lot of people. Um, problem with this fight though, we've just never seen Barzola's takedown defense or scrambling ability. Barzola's always been matched pretty favorably. Uh, he's pretty much had strikers, and he's got a good wrestling game himself. Barzola, good takedowns, but uh, very poor top control. Um, but I just don't know what his takedown defense is like and he's scrambling. Um, Evloev is going to be all over him. Can Barzola deal with that? Gut says no. He's probably going to get grinded out. But I, again, I'm a better. I like to... Uh, you know, look, if Evloev was the dog here, then I'd be willing to to definitely bet Evloev. But when Evloev is out at minus 200 and, you know, there's a huge facet of this fight that's unknown which is how Evloev is going to try and win by wrestling Barzola and we don't know what Barzola's takedown defence or scrambling is like it just leaves a massive hole I mean how does this fight play out on the feet Barzola's got good calf kicks it's probably a bit quicker I'd probably give the edge to Barzola on the feet but I mean it's not like Barzola's a, a killer on the feet but he, he does have a good chin he's willing to take one to give one um, he's a tough guy he's relentless himself but his normal style isn't going to work here. I think if he does try and wrestle Evloev, he's going to lose the scrambles. I think Barzola's game plan is probably going to be to try and defend and outstrike Evloev. But it does seem like a tough ask for him. But I just don't think I can get behind Evloev at like minus 200 because of that big unknown. Um, fight goes to a decision. I do like that, but you know it's minus 300 practically which I don't particularly like so I do think everywhere wins here but minus 200 I just can't get behind I think I'm just gonna have to live bet it I mean I hope some Barzola money comes in minus 150 or so everywhere I'd definitely be tempted to take that risk um, but when we just don't know how that takedown defense and scrambling is gonna look and if the fight is forced to take place on the feet for three rounds, and I do give Barzola the edge, I just can't bet. I can't bet a minus two hundred favourite. So I'm going to pick Evloev to win a decision here. I'm going to pick him to look impressive, but as a better, I can't risk money at that current line with that big unknown. But I'm excited to see that fight to see Evloev. I hope Evloev looks good because I do like him. Um, he maybe lost a little bit of shine as well because he. He beat the Korean chap in his UFC debut and then um, I can't remember the guy's name the guy that came back from the potential career ending beatdown um, come back after a two year layoff and actually finished the, the Korean guy so yeah took a little bit of shine possibly off Evloev there but I, I still think he's a, a, a legitimate prospect and I'm very intrigued to see how he does in, in the UFC uh, Alex Wyatt taking on Rafael Fiziev um, I don't really get this line guys um, let's see if it's changed at all Fiziev is currently my, it's coming in a little bit I did see him up at minus 240 he's minus 220 at the moment um, look, I, look I, I kind of I lean him here but I just can't get behind that price we've not you know he's barely had any MMA fights he's not fought anyone decent uh, we saw him in his UFC debut get taken out really quickly it was a bit a bit disappointing really um, I was really looking forward to seeing him and um, just didn't kind of live up to the hype he's got a he's got a massive Thai boxing background fought a lot at, in Thailand he trains at Tiger but I mean in terms of his MMA career he's very he's very new to MMA very raw you know he's fought no one of no um, the five was easily his hardest match up in MMA and you know got blown away in a minute and a half so there's a lot of unknowns here for me I mean he's obviously a good striker um, but you know Alex White 
isn't a complete mug. Um, you know, he his last fight against Dan Barrett as well, he managed to kind of he done well on the feet, but he managed to actually out grind Dan Barrett as well. I mean, how's Fizio going to hold up if it is a kind of a, a grinding type match? Um, he does have power. Look, I have to give Fizio the advantage on the feet. He's a he's clearly a destructive, powerful guy. But Alex White has been in there with some good fighters. He's got a lot more MMA experience. Fiziev's takedown defence etc is still an unknown I mean I expect this fight to play out on the feet because it is Alex White and I expect Fiziev to win the striking battle here but it's Fiziev is very raw he doesn't deserve that price in my opinion look if he was closer to evens I'd, I'd probably be on Fiziev here but minus 220 when you're coming off a, a loss in your UFC debut in just over a minute in easily the toughest fight of your MMA career and there he's got the, the second toughest fight of his MMA career don't really get the love I mean I might look silly here Fiziev I mean I'm picking Fiziev to win and Fiziev might come out and destroy him quickly but I can't buy into the hype until I've seen him perform to a high level in the UFC against a decent opponent and we haven't seen that yet so for me it's a pass fight I will take Fiziev to win but I can't bet him at that price and let's have a look at the inside the distance line if it doesn't go to a decision is sitting at minus 160 I mean Alex White got finished by Jim Miller didn't he Jim Miller dropped him and then choked him so that's not a good look um, Besides that, he's got the distance with like Rocco Martin, James Krause, Craig Collard. He got stopped by Lucas Martins. I mean, look, this fight plan out on the feet over three rounds. You, you've got to think Fiziev probably has the power to put him away, but but again, it's just, it's just a pass for me. I think you know he's. Who has he put away in MMA? Fiziev, just no one, just bums. So who knows? You know, and if Alex White can start to grind on him, make it uh, slow him down, yeah, it's a pass for me. I'll pick Fiziev, but betting perspective, there are too, way too many unknowns here for me to be taking that minus 220. Right, last fight on the preliminary card, we've got Randa Marcos taking on Ashley Yoda, so fairly low level MMA fight, women's MMA fight here for me. Um, just an aside though, my actual um, favourite or biggest lean on this card was Julia Avila and typically that fight got scrapped. Um, but back to Yoda Marcos, so Marcos is currently minus 170, Yoda's plus 150, I haven't bothered to do tape on this because I knew I wouldn't be betting it, um, but from memory Randa is going to want to try and get this fight to the floor. Um, Ashley has improved her, her stand up it's definitely improved over the last few years um, I'll probably give her the, the edge on the feet it's just whether her takedown defence holds up because I can remember like Angela Hill taking her down and and even um, Mackenzie Dern whose takedowns are pretty terrible it, it couldn't get her down for the first couple of rounds but did get her down in round 3 so it's just it's just whether she's going to be able to do enough on the feet to outweigh Marcus's takedowns and, and top control but we saw Marcos last time out against Claudia Gadella she didn't look good at all, she didn't attempt any takedowns so who knows what game plan Marcos comes in with here I just can't trust them guys I just can't. <laughs> there's no way I'm trusting Randa as a minus 170 um, look I think the value is probably on Ashley now I'm not betting this fight personally so I'm not telling you to go away and bet Ashley Yoda but if I had to bet this fight I would take the plus 150 on, on Ashley Yoda fight goes to a decision uh, too juiced for me minus 333 three, three. yeah look if you're going to bet it I think that I'm going to pick Yoda here I just think the value's on her I think maybe it should be closer to a pick em. Um I can't see why why Rand is the favourite because of her wrestling and the top control and so forth but I think Ashley's better on the feet here but I'd rather just live bet this fight you know it's not one that I really want to risk cash on but I think Yoda is the right side at the current prices so I'm going to pick Ashley Yoda to, to win a very close split decision type fight here 
right onto the main card now so welterweight division we've got Muslim Salikov taking on Lorino Staropoli quick turnaround this for Salikov he's coming off a win over uh, Nordin Taleb I think it was just last month knocked him out in the first round um, the problem I have with Salikov is his volume he's, he's very low volume um, he, he clearly has big power um, we saw that with how he took out Nordin Taleb um, but it you know he does allow himself to kind of get out worked and Staropoli is going to come with a, a a volume heavy approach that is definite he's definitely going to have the higher volume here so Sadikov might need a knockout here to win this fight um, but we know he can get it he one punch Ricky Rainey he one punch Nordin Taleb the power is definitely there um, he's going to get the fight he wants as well he's not going to have to worry about the takedowns like he did against Alex Garcia which is how Alex Garcia won so he's going to get the fight he wants on the feet here Staropoli is Argentinian guy, nine and one. We've seen him in the UFC a couple of times now. He's beaten Thiago Alves and and Hector Aldana. Um, as I said, a high volume approach. I think it just comes down to whether Selikov can can catch him coming in and put him away, or whether Staropoli is going to out volume him. Um, I mean, I don't. I'm still not on the Muslim Selikov bandwagon. Um, you know, a, a lot of his stuff is low volume, like the spinning heel kicks and so forth. But his two KOs in the UFC have been punches. The, the Ricky Rainey one was kind of a little bit fluky, just in terms of where it landed. It was right behind the ear, and it just shut Ricky Rainey down. But nothing fluky about the, the, the Nordin Taleb one. But there was question marks over Taleb's durability um, going into that fight. But I think Selikov is about... He's 35, um, so it's not like he's a spring chicken. Staropoli is the young man here for sure, um, 26 years of age. It's a tough fight to call um, because I can see Muslim getting out volumed, but I can also see him catching Staropoli because he, he, he's going to be there to be hit with that high volume approach. Um, the bet lines actually come down. I think last time I looked, Salikov was like uh, over minus 200, but. Uh, current line is just a pass for me, guys. Um, Selikov minus 160. Staropoli plus 140. Look, I'd probably favour Selikov just because he's got that power advantage. Um, hmm. There might be some value here, though. Fight goes to a decision plus 160. Now, Staropoli isn't a big puncher. His two UFC fights have gone to a decision. Um, you know, Hector Aldana, not the most durable guy in the world. Thiago Alves isn't the fighter he once was. He's still pretty durable though, but I don't see him putting Muslim away. Let's have a quick look at Muslim's losses. So he got choked by Garcia, choked in another fight. I don't really see that transpiring here. I think this is going to play out on the feet don't see him knocking Selikov out so it just comes down to whether Selikov's going to knock Staropoli out and there probably is a decent chance of that because if Selikov wins it does tend to be by finish um, just wish I had a better idea of what Staropoli's chin's like because Thiago Elvis and Hector Adana aren't the biggest punchers in the world um, he does have a loss, a KO loss, but it's back in 2013, you know, he's like 20 years of age. Completely different fighter back then, so... I think there might be a bit of value on that, fight goes to a decision plus 160. It's not something I'm chomping at the bit to bet, it definitely wouldn't be a big bet. But I definitely don't see Staropoli finishing, um, but obviously the, the danger is Muslim finishing, but... I think they should maybe be closer to an even money line. So I think there's a bit of value on fight going to a decision there at plus 160. don't know if I'm playing it personally, but just looking at that, first time I've looked at these inside the distance lines, that is the first one that's really stood out to me so far at, at plus 160. So, you know, so a lot of Selikov's codes, as I said, they're low percentage stuff with the spinning heel kicks and so forth. And I know someone like him, it's, it's more higher percentage than your average Joe throwing them. But... But like I said, both of these UFC fights are, are punch-related KOs, so 
So yeah, uh, it's one to have a think about. I do think there's a little bit of value there. Next fight, we've got Cyril Gain taking on uh, Dontel Mays. Uh, look, I, I, I lean Cyril Gain here. I think he's going to win this fight, but I, I can't play him at minus 300. You know, he's he's very new to MMA. The Saber fight didn't really tell me a great deal. He actually you know, didn't get really going on the feet. Managed to get that takedown in instant sub. Um, Mays... He's definitely improved. If you watch his contender series fights, he's been on three in a row. He's he's definitely improved fight to fight, but I still don't see a huge amount of potential in him. But there's no way I'm paying minus 300. Cyril's got some hype and so forth, but I think he can be hit. I don't think he's he's unhittable, and he does have power. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's got like bone crunching. Like he's he's going to touch you, and it's definitely the fight's going to be over kind of power. So. So I pick Cyril here, but guys, I would just say stay away from the minus 300. Um, don't bet it. He's very, he's very un, um, he's very inexperienced in MMA. You know, who knows what could happen if Mays puts up a fight. Fight goes to a decision. Uh, yeah, it's unplayable. Minus 500 is getting on for. So <sighs> I pick Cyril here, but as I said, Mays has made improvements. I think he's just a little bit too sloppy for, for, for someone with Gaines stand up pedigree but it's MMA guys they've got four ounce gloves on it's heavyweight Gaines is new to MMA I would not be shocked if May's pulled it off but I'll pick Gaines but there's no one betting it at that at that price no way right fight I'm most looking forward to on the main card we've got Benil Dariush taking on Frank Camacho men's lightweight division so Frank Camacho has changed things up now. He's training over at God, I've forgotten the name of the camp he's at now. Um, same camp that Marlon Vera's at, the Colin Oyama camp. So, which is a good move for him. I think he used to train on on the island he's from. So now he's a man of quality teammates. He's getting to work with would have picked up tenfold. He's getting proper direction from a good head coach. And you could see that in the fight with Nick Hine there. Nick Hine is shot. He's he retired after this fight. Um, but he fought a lot more clever than we've ever seen from him. Normally he's a wild man. Comes out, blows his wad and then just has to kind of fight through the, uh, the, the gas tank. But against Nick Hine, way more reserved. Fought way more intelligently. I think I remember in between rounds as well, Colin Yama's just reminding him, look, don't brawl, just keep doing what you're doing. So they're, they're obviously trying to change his style. And he looked really good against Nick Hine. But I don't want to take too much from that fight because Nick Hine was a bit of a punch bag in that fight. He's He, he was just done as a fighter. Um, I had my reservations about Hine going into that fight and I, I bet Camacho in that fight. Um for those reasons um, but it was great to see Camacho come out and fly, fight a lot more clever um, use some fight IQ just change his style up completely um, Darius isn't shot so it's going to be a case of let's see when Camacho is actually having stuff fired back at him if he can remain disciplined that's going to be the, the, the kind of big ask here for him if he can maintain that discipline in this fight when he's got shots being fired back at him by Darius so that's the big one for me here. How disciplined can he can he stay? So I I can't fully jump on ball jet because it was Nick Hine. Um and just historically you look at Frank Camacho fights, they're all just crazy brawls. Um I also remember the Damian Brown fight where Brown got him down in round one and came very close to choking him out. And Benil Darius is a very high level uh, BJJ pr practitioner and he's He's carried it and adapted it to MMA very well. So I do have that concern in the back of my mind as well. Um, but he does bring volume, Frank. Um, it's just he needs to just fight with that same fight IQ he used against Nick Hine. And hopefully he'll see the, the dividends it paid from the Nick Hine fight. He didn't take any damage. His cardio was in check. Looked great. Benil Dariush, real solid fighter. Um, the question marks with Darius really revolve around his his chin. He's had a he had two real bad knockout losses, the Barboza and the Hernandez fight. You don't see 
knockout site that too often like out cold both of them real real bad um, there's also been some question marks over his cardio in the past um, we've seen him slow down he's slowed down against Michael Chiesa we saw him slow down against Evan Dunham changed his style up though since those knockout losses against Thiago Moises and Drew Dober um, I mean Darish is a very solid striker he comes from uh, King's MMA um, he's got very good kicks um, decent hands but he's he's definitely gone back to his roots his last couple of fights and I mean it's paid off for him totally dominated Thiago Moises for three rounds and Drew Dober he he couldn't get Drew Dober down in round one and then he got rocked a few times but uh, Drew Dober packed some heat in his shots but he managed to get that takedown in uh, round two and I think he actually pulled off the armbar from the bottom, so um, if, well, he didn't get lucky because he obviously armbarred him. But um, I remember I live bet Drew Dobra after round one in that fight. I think it was still sitting around evens, and I was pretty confident. But yeah, he just managed to eventually get him down and, and pull out that sub. So this is going to be a very interesting fight because, in terms of uh, durability, I have to give that to Camacho. Um, I don't think Darius is going to want to you know going by his last two fights um, and he's a smart guy he's not going to want to be trading on the feet with Camacho because Camacho can bang um, I think he's going to be looking for the takedowns here now Camacho he's got I think it's like a judo background he's got because he's got some decent trips we've seen him use uh, use them a few times um, it's just how does his takedown defense hold up here because Darius once he gets on top he's he's really good at controlling people from top position um, and he's shown it with his gas tank as well in, at least against Thiago Moises his gas tank held up for the three rounds um, in that particular fight Cabecho managed to keep it on the feet against Drew Dober but we have seen him taken down as I mentioned earlier Damien Brown and um, Lee managed to get him down as well so it's going to be I think Darius can probably work to get him down um, I mean Darius might come out early he's got that south poor stance he's got a really good body kick might try and take some of the wind out of Camacho um, a lot of people were on Darius that I, I respect sorry Camacho that I respect in the betting community they was all trying to jump in on the plus 150 line it's currently um, currently sitting at Minus so Darius is now minus 140, Camacho plus 120. It's uh, it's another pass fight for me, guys, in terms of betting. I just don't really know what way this fight's going to go. I can see an argument for either guy. I don't think there's a great deal of value either way on the betting line now. Um, can Camacho remain disciplined, especially if he feels like he's losing the striking if Darius comes out and just starts blasting him with body kicks starts landing on him is Camacho going to return to type can he maintain that discipline is Darius going to come out and just try and wrestle instantly can he get the takedowns and if he can can he maintain that control is the wrestling going to slow him down over a, a couple of rounds is it going to slow Camacho down it's just a hard fight for me to get a, f a proper read on um, I fully understand why people were, were taking Camacho at plus 150 um, it's definitely a dangerous fight for Darius if he can keep the fight standing because he's got that power and Darius's chin is is definitely compromised. Um, but I'm going to go against the grain, um, and I know he's the favourite, so it's not necessarily the grain, but just from what I've seen from people I chat to and on Twitter and that, I'm going to pick Darius here to to grind this decision out. I think he's going to be able to mix in his takedowns and enough top control to take this fight um, but and I'm not fully sold yet on Camacho fighting this new style being far more patient reserved not going into brawl mode I need to see him tested a bit more than, than the Nick Hine fight to fully buy into it but fully open to being wrong here it's a close fight and I can see the, the angle for Camacho but I'm going to pick Darius probably to win a decision here um, I know Camacho's got a decent BJJ background himself, but I think Darius is, is probably on the mat. He's probably a step ahead, so I think he can do enough to, to grind this out. But on the feet, he's got to be careful. But like I said, if you get the more patient Camacho, it's 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 probably going to suit Darius more than having the wild. I mean, 
to be honest, this fight might be better for Camacho if he is a kind of more of the wild man. Um, because if he is more patient, I can see Darius just using the kicks to keep him at range as much as possible. Um, I think Camacho might be best served to make this a bit of a brawl. Um, and, you know, he's got to be careful that he, he, he doesn't get overly aggressive and gives up a takedown. But I think if he makes this more of a brawl, it, it definitely will suit him more than than Darius. And I definitely think his chin holds up better and he's definitely got the power advantage. Darius isn't a big puncher, really. So... Yeah, it's finding that balance for Camacho because I think he needs to be a bit more aggressive perhaps than he was against Haim because uh, Darius is much more of a live body than, than Haim was. So yeah, really interesting fight. Hard one for me to get a full read on uh, just in terms of how Camacho is going to approach it and even Darius, if Darius is going to just be full wrestle mode or whether he's going to use his striking in parts and kind of come in with the takedowns, I, I, I just don't know. I think... I think both fighters are a little bit in two minds. Darius knows his chin's compromised, so he's he's got to go back to the, the wrestling and BJJ side more. Camacho knows he can't fight like he has been. If he wants to have success in the UFC, he needs to be more patient. Um, he can't get into these wild brawls. He needs to watch his cardio. But, but how does he approach this fight? Um, you know, is he going to win a range striking battle with Darius? So it's a real tough one to call. Um, good luck to anyone betting it. I'm going to pick Darius, but as I said, I don't think there's much value on the line. Um, let's just see what the inside of distance is. Best fight odds. The the order is completely wrong. It's taking me ages to find the bloody lines. Um, inside the distance is sitting at. Fight doesn't go to a decision minus one seventy. Fight goes to a decision plus one thirty. Um, I'm picking Darius, so and I think he wins by decision. I'm not sure, but then you know Frank nearly got choked out by a bloody um, the Australian guy. I don't think I've even got a lean on that really, so I'd, I'm probably avoiding that one as well. So yeah, life bet for me on that one. Um, next fight we've got the co-main event we've got Michael Johnson taking on Stevie Ray <sighs> look I just I don't see Stevie Ray winning this fight to basically get to the point quickly um, he's uh, I went and done tape on him and just rewatched his last few fights and it's just a case of I mean, he's coming off being one punch by Leonardo Santos like quite a bad knockout it's not a great look just in a Yari fight was very close. Um, I think he was maybe a little bit fortunate to get that decision. Uh, he got backed up the whole fight. Just the, the more eye-catching shots were coming from a Yari. A lot of what um, a lot of what Stevie Ray was landing was leg kicks, and judges always, unless they're massively damaging leg kicks, judges always favour punches to the face over leg kicks. Um, he lost a split decision to Cajun Johnson. A really close fight there, but I mean, Cajun is difficult to look good against because he just skirts around the outside. He doesn't really commit much. Doesn't really come to fight. It's he's a hard guy to look good against. Very close fight. Um, and then before that, he got stopped by Paul Felder. But just I I just see this fight as Stevie Ray being on the the, the back foot, and Michael's just a better striker. I mean, all Stevie Ray really offers is he throws that left hand he kind of spams it um he is a southpaw um and he throws the the low kick that's about all he offers on the feet i just can't see that being enough to deal with michael johnson i mean i know michael's got his faults um he's a southpaw as well so we've got the, the southpaw versus southpaw aspect here but, I mean, if you look at Michael's career, I know he brain farts and uh, and everything, and he's a hard guy to trust, but... I mean, I know Emmett uh, knocked him out last fight, by the way. But just throwing that in there before I say this, but he was two rounds up. But uh, no one has outstruck Michael Johnson over the course of a fight, except for Nate Diaz. No one. Um, in the UFC, you know, he's lost to... I mean, I know Gaethje kind of stopped him standing, but that was just... Uh, 
he, he, Michael just wilted. He just gave absolutely everything he could to get Gaethje out of there. Gaethje just somehow survived and then punched himself out. I, you know, it's not going to happen here. Stevie Ray hasn't got that durability or that kind of style. So in terms of an actual kind of striking match, and you know, if you look at, um, you know, Michael was winning that fight until he just gassed himself out basically. Um, that's not going to happen here. He'd be able to fight more reserved. Ray, Ray doesn't bring anything like the kind of pressure Gaethje does, and I expect Michael to be the one on the front foot here. And if Michael's the one controlling the octagon, pushing you back, he's a very difficult guy to be. Um, you know, as I said, Nate Diaz is the only one to outstrike him, and he's been in there with good people. He's been in there with the Dariu. She's been in there with Edson Barboza. He's been in there with Tony Ferguson. He's been in there with Melvin Gallard. Um, he's been in there with Andre Feely, he's been in there with Josh Emmett, you know, he's faced good strikers. Um, and he's managed to get the better of all of them, bar, bar Nate Diaz on the feet. So I just, you know, and I can't see Stevie Ray being able to use a wrestling game plan here and um, taking advantage on the mat. I don't think he's good enough. Um, I, I just think Michael just either gets a knockout here or just pieces him up for three rounds. I fully get why people wouldn't want to bet him at minus 350 kind of has that kind of trust issue I completely get that but I just think stylistically it's a very very favourable matchup for for Michael here um, just looking back at the last few fights he's had I mean I think it's even more favourable than the um, Artem Lobo fight because uh, the thing with Artem is you know he's tough as hell he's going to keep coming keep pressuring um, you know he, he, he's quite difficult to look good against I think stylistically it's his best fight since I mean, we're going back a long way now. I mean, four. Damn. Well, you know, I, I don't think I'm being OTT here when I say it potentially it's his best fight stylistically since probably Joe Lozon back in 2013. Um, I just, you know, if, if he messes this one up, then probably needs to review his career. But I just. I just don't see him losing this fight to Stevie Ray. Um, but as I said, trust is an issue with him. Fully understand why people wouldn't want to bet him at minus 350. It is it is too steep. Um, but when we say he's got, we've, it, there's trust issues. You know, you look at the kind of types of opponents where he's brain fired against, and it's just no one like Stevie Ray. I just, I just, I'm just very confident that Michael wins this fight, but. He is minus 350. I mean, I know some people manage to get like minus 200 kind of ish, maybe even minus minus 250. I think there's there was value there, but um, yeah, I can't get behind the the current line. But I, you know, he's probably one of my more confident picks, or if not, my most confident pick on the card. So I'll go with Michael. Let's just look at inside the distance because um, Stevie is coming off. I mean, to be fair, Michael's coming off a bad knockout loss as well. Um, both of them got put out cold, but uh, I'd be more concerned about being put out cold by Leo Santos than I would Josh Emmett, who just possesses absolute fire. Um, fight doesn't go to a decision, it's plus 120. Michael hasn't finished anyone really for a while. Um, I mean, Feely is durable, I mean, Lobov's durable as well. Last finish was the Dustin Poirier fight. Um, Stevie Ray is coming off that bad knockout loss, and Paul Felder melted him with elbows as well, dropped him, and then finished him off on the floor. I wouldn't be shocked if Michael put him away, to be completely honest. But I can possibly see Stevie Ray kind of. Skirting around the fence a little bit, kind of maybe not engaging in a firefight. So I'm not even really overly keen on the inside the distance price either. Just a tough card for me, betting wise. Don't like it. Um, main event, uh, well to wait. Ben Asker and Damian Meyer. Look real quickly on this one, guys. I don't have a read on Ben Askren. Um His UFC run hasn't helped me get a read on him at all. You know, he's had two fights in the UFC. Both of them have been over the, pretty much before they started. It's just not allowed me to get any more of an inclination as to how good he is or not, basically. Um, he's definitely got a more favourable fight here in the sense that he's not facing a striker. He's going to get the type of fight he wants, but it's one of the best grapplers we've ever seen in MMA that he's, he's getting that shot against. Um, 
on the feet. I have to give the advantage to Damien Meyer. Um, but this is probably Meyer's retirement fight. He's 41 years of age now. He's going to fly all the way to Singapore. It's a five round fight as well. Now we know Meyer's gas tank doesn't hold up well. Um, I haven't gone back and watched Ben Askren's fights that have gone to round five. I'm just looking. He's got a, he beat Koroshov in round four years ago. Um, I think he's had some other round. He's been five rounds a few times. I haven't gone back and watched these fights. I assume his cardio held up fine in them. But it might have all been one-way traffic. He was probably just grappling these people pretty easy. Whereas with Damian Meyer... It's not. He's not just going to be able to take Damien down and allowing him at least not early. Um, I think the key here for for Ben is yeah, he needs to make Damien work, and he needs to obviously be really careful in round one, um, even round two. But it, you know, it's highly likely that Myers starts to slow down. But having said that, if Meyer gets the fight he wants for five rounds, which is a grappling heavy affair. Maybe his cardio will hold up better. You know, the fights he's been really struggling in cardio-wise. That's no. I'll take that back. Actually, we saw the Rocco Martin fight. He just gas completely, didn't he? After the first couple of rounds, he just doesn't have the gas tank. Um, I'm probably it's a live bet fight for me because the way I see it is Damian Meyer could pull out a submission in round one. I think once we start getting to round two, round three, he's going to start slowing down. It's going to allow Ben to start taking over. You know, Myers always could for one or two rounds and then he just starts to slow down. Um, and I think he might look good early here. So you might get a good live bet line on Ben. But as long as Ben can survive, he's probably going to take over. But as I said, I just don't have a full read on, on Ben. Um, the two UFC fights haven't helped and he's up at minus 185 here. So it's a pass for me. Um... The fight goes to distance. Let's see what that's sitting at. See, I prefer fight goes to a decision if you like Ben at minus 155 because I don't see Ben finishing Damian Meyer. I mean, Damian's been finished once in his whole career and that was by a strike. I, I, I definitely do not see Ben getting the finish here. So I think personally, if you like Ben Askren, I would take fight goes to a decision at minus 150 um, and uh, do you know what I think it might be a solid bet because Damian Meyer if he doesn't get the sub in round one it just seems unlikely that he's going to get it because he is going to slow down um, you've got I think Ben can defend on the floor you know, he's got a lot of experience you know he You've got to think he can defend if this fight does hit the floor, even in round one. But I mean, he is dangerous in round one. In round one, Damien. I'm just looking, how many, how often has he finished in round one? I mean, he's fought a who's who. You know, he couldn't get Rocco out. I'm mean, good. He did finish, and then he fought you know, three killer wrestlers at welterweight. Couldn't finish Masvidal. He did finish Carlos Condit did finish Matt Brown but it took him till the third round but I mean the people he's been finishing Neil Magny, Matt Brown, Carlos Condit, Lyman Good all people you kind of expect him to finish when he's fought the more grappling savvy guys like your Jorge Masvidal's, your Gunnar Nelson's, your Ryan Le Flair's, um, your Rocco Martins he's not been getting the finish so yeah for me if you're going to bet this fight I mean I'm probably just going to live bet it but if I had to make a bet on this fight with the current lines available I'd I'd take fight goes to a decision at minus 150. I actually quite like that. I think if you like Ben, it's definitely the bet to make because um, it pays better. And I just I just do not see Ben Askren finishing this fight. He's not got the strike in. And I mean, even on an exhausted Meyer, I do not see him tapping Meyer. So that's, that's not a bad line, but it is a five round fight. So you've always got better in mind. You've got those extra two rounds to sweat. But fight goes to decision for me is the best bet on that fight. So that concludes this card, guys. Sorry it's not a great breakdown. I know I've not made predictions on a number of fights, um, and I'm not confident in a lot of the fights, but I've got to be honest, it's, I just don't like it. It's one of these cards. You get a couple a year, probably. Um, all I can say is UFC 244 is absolute fire, and we will be back with 
proper predictions, proper tips. Um, really looking forward to that card. One of, if not the best card of the year. But Singapore does not float my boat. Yeah, I think going through everything I went through with you guys, all I like is main event fight going to a decision. And there was one other one I highlighted. I think it was the Staropolis Salikov plus 160 going to a decision. But I'm not in love with it. I just think the line's... A little, I think maybe it should be more, maybe a bit closer to a pick 'em, but it, it's hard to gauge how durable Staropoli is because he's he's not full big punches in his two UFC fights, so it might be a pass. I think my favourite bet from looking at this is the fight goes to a decision in the main event um, at minus one fifty. Uh, not sure if I'm going to bet it myself. I might just save myself for for live betting here. Um, but yeah, but good luck everyone. As I said right at the start. If you want to jump on board for the live betting package, it's £150 for 12 months. If you want pre-bets and live bets, it's £195. We are up £100 betters per unit betters, 11300 this year. Great return on investment. So jump on board, drop us a DM, drop us an email. You pay via PayPal, info at prommabetting.com. I'm going to have two live betting events. Uh, this weekend coming we're gonna have the UFC Singapore and we're gonna have the boxing in London in the evening and there possibly might be a third with Bellator undecided if I'm gonna um, get up for the Bellator live bet or not yet but uh, there might be Bellator so we might have three events but definitely two so good luck everyone hope you all made money last week hope you make money this week and I'll be back next week for as I said that absolute fire of a card UFC 244